Hello, my name is Kelsey Beckstrom, and I've been student teaching in Mrs. Coleman's art room at our Port Central School for the last couple weeks. And I previously was an Alfred Montessori school teacher, and this is the show that came about me collaborating with my students and painting with them. So basically what I did is they would start all of my paintings, so they would do the base layer of my paintings, and I would go on top with oil paint, and that's how this line of work came about. So uh, we can first have right here a video of, of the process of these base layers being made. Uh, so this is our kindergarten class at our court being, uh, working on their painting. So this has all of the videos from kindergarten, fourth, and sixth grade who worked on their paintings. And then we can move over and get started looking at these paintings. So first up right here, we have Notan, which was made by our sixth grader. Uh, and then what I did on top of it was inspired by our third grade lesson on Japanese Notan. Uh, so they did an awesome job. It was really fun working with complementary colors and uh, pattern and shape and uh, texture on this one. Next we have shadows and the kindergarten class did the base layer on this one. Uh, I did the top layer outside of my studio on our deck and um, it was like just the right time of night, so the shadows of the pillars on the deck were going across the canvas, and I thought that it looked really amazing going across with kindergartners' work. So that's what inspired the overpainting on this one. Next up, we have Isotheles, which is my ode to geometry. Uh, so if Mr. Franklin's watching, he'll be excited about that. Uh, I have the, let's see, this one was with our fourth grade collaborator. And again, we worked with complementary colors, the orange and blues, and some pinks in there. And I thought that it could use some like geometry put into it, some structure. And I thought that the triangle over top was a great way to do that. So that is Isosceles. Over here, we have Organism, and this was created by our sixth grade students again. Um, I was really amazed by the way that they like did their brush strokes, the way that they um, covered the canvas so quickly in paint, and the way that they were really fearless about the way that they applied paint to the canvas. So I wanted to do the same, and I just put these really crazy organism, organism excuse me, organism like structures on top of them and I thought that it was really fun how they seemed to organically do that so I wanted to kind of mimic that on top. And last one on this wall we have fog which was uh, hoped to be made by the kindergarten class. Uh, again they just like knew how to cover the canvas in whatever way that they could uh, and they quickly put down so many different patterns with our like rollers and um, the paint brushes and I thought that it was really fun to watch them create this over top of the paint base layer that I put down. So they did a really awesome job. Uh, I thought that again it could maybe use a little help being calmed down a bit so I put this fog like layer over it. So that is fog. Next over here, these are my three paintings that I did with my Alfred Montessori students. Uh, first over here, this one was named by one of their, our students and it's called Pinky. Um, so again, the preschoolers especially, they just completely fearlessly covered the canvas in paint in less than 10 minutes and made the most insane, amazing brush strokes that I could imagine. So again, just like putting some structure into it and it was for all of these really it was really hard to make these paintings better. I felt like I was always struggling to balance what was my work and what was their work. And honestly most times they made great paintings all on their own and so it was really difficult to 
figure out how to improve them at all, if I could even improve them at all. Um, this one is called Intellect. This one was one of the hardest that I had to figure out uh, just because the base painting I thought was so great on its own. Um, so I kind of had to sit on this one for three months into quarantine. Um, I still haven't worked on this even though we completed the base layer in March. It took me about three months to even start putting paint on top of this one. Um, so again, just putting structure on top of it in the most basic way that I could was to find the geometry within it and to place border to the main painting. And also figure out what colors it might have needed or what colors I think fit well within the painting. Um, this is the first one that I made out of this uh, body of work. So this one is called Shrouding. Uh, this one took me the longest to complete and it has probably the most layers on it um, of oil paint on top of what I did on top of the preschooler's work. But it ended up being one of my favorites. I think that the overlay of black just makes everything that the preschoolers did really pop. And one of my favorite parts of this whole show are like the um, can prints that we see <laughs> because they were like leaning into the um, canvas to try to cover everything. And I think those are like the most fun parts of these paintings are like the, the unexpected marks that I never intended to see there. Over here, we have Entanglement, which is a piece that I made on my own. Um, the way that this whole line of work came about is that I worked on top of found paintings or my, old, my own old paintings. So there's layers and layers and layers of oil paint on here. And um, I figured instead of just trying to find paintings that I could have my students make paintings and I could paint on top of them because it's their marks that always had inspired me. So I thought, why not go straight to the source and get a painting from them? So that was, this is kind of one of the paintings that started this whole body of work. And this is um, another one of my favorites that I did alone. Um, this one is called, what's this one called? Lead into Morning. Um, this was done on a found painting, like Alfred in the summer. There's just paintings all over the place and we kind of just take them as we can find them. And so this was a found painting that I kept doing layers of oil on top of and wiping away and adding more. And uh, this is how it ended up, and it ended up being one of my favorites. Next, we have these two pieces by one is an art short collaborator and another is a Montessori collaborator. Um, this one is temperate sticks and oil on the canvas. And that was done by one of our adaptive art students. And again, it was, it's, I say about all of them, but it's one of my favorites just because of the, the fun marks that she was able to make was really inspiring. And I felt like I couldn't even like up that at all. So I just kind of filled in all of the white space with a color that I thought fit well. And that was all I had to do to complete this painting. And then again, the colors that our Montessori students chose were always amazing. So it was another struggle to figure out what to do with this piece, but I think in the end it ended up being really fun to work, to work on. And that was one of the things that was the most challenging about this line of work, again, is that these paintings done by the students are so great to begin with that it feels wrong to even want to change them, but that's what I think helped make me, like forced me to grow as an artist was to challenge myself to make these better, these better somehow and add on to their work without diminishing it at all. And we have this one over here, which is Contact, which was done by another preschool collaborator. This one ended up being my show card. Um, I think that the colors in it were really fun. And the fact that she just did everything she could on that base layer of canvas and mixed every color she possibly could um, gave me some freedom to pick what colors I wanted to add to the canvas since it was a really neutral base that I could add on to. Here we have another one that I did on my own. This one is called Dream State. 
Uh, this one I got to because I literally had a dream about this weird triangular shape and it just, I, again, just kept adding layers and layers of oil paint and we ended up here somehow. And so that was one that I did on my own. We have a second grade collaborator from uh, Alfred Allman over here with this one called Highlight. Again, um, I really wanted to keep as much of the original painting as I could on this one. So I did the oil ground um, like color overlays on top of it just to give it a different color palette and it ended up being a really challenging one to figure out those colors for, but it, I think it ended up being really fun to uh, work with. We've got two more big ones over here. This one right here is called Night Sky and I made this with the fourth graders at our tour. Um, they literally described it as a night sky as they were making it. Um, because of the colors that they were given. So I felt like I had to keep going with that idea. Um, and so they made this one a little bit easier on me, which was nice since I had the inspiration from what they were talking about while they were making this piece. And our last large scale piece is Overdrive. This was made by our adaptive art class. And again, they just knew exactly how to cover the canvas with all of their crazy patterns and colors. And so I just kept pushing it for, uh, further and made this painting absolutely insane and had a lot of fun with it. So that is Overdrive. We've got two more left. Um, this one has a special spot in my heart because this base painting was done by my nephew. So this is the only non our court or Alfred student, he just started preschool in May or in September and we made this, I think in June. So again, just adding to his work and seeing what he could do and what I could do together was really fun. So that one is done by my nephew and me. And lastly, again, this is one of the first pieces that inspired me to start this body of work. This one is called, what is this? I can't remember the names of my paintings ever. Uh, this is called Lucidity. So again, I'm always inspired by dreams and shapes that I see in nature and all around me all the time. So this was just like a huge conglomeration of layers of paint and shapes and experimentations all kind of put onto one canvas. And with that, that's the end of the show. Um, I don't know if we want to do a quick pan around of the gallery. Uh, so this is the Robert C. Turner Gallery at Alfred University, so I was lucky enough to be able to apply for this show uh, last semester when we got shut down and we weren't able to have our senior shows. So it was really great to be able to have this opportunity to uh, show the work even though we weren't able to have those senior shows in person last year. So that's about it. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed the show. Um, if any of you have questions or any of your children have questions, I'll be at the school until the end of October about, and I've been loving it at our court as I always have, and I hope to hear from all of you soon.